Talk about an incredible instinct for survival. How Jenny Haynes overcame the unimaginable horror she suffered as a child is beyond extraordinary. Her brain conjured up two and a half thousand different personalities to fight off the monster who was harming her, her father. He's now in jail for his crimes, but that doesn't mean Jenny's army of best friends has disappeared. As Liz Hayes reports, they're all still watching over her, determined to make sure the rest of this wonderful woman's life is fulfilled, happy, and as strange as it sounds, normal. I finally have an image. I have a style. This is the face of a true survivor. It makes me feel sensuous. Jenny Haynes is an extremely intelligent and vibrant 52-year-old with a joyful zest for life. This is me. So it's hard to believe that beneath her bright eyes and relaxed smile... I am so alive is a deeply wounded woman with an extraordinary story. My dad inflicted, chose to inflict, severe, sadistic, violent abuse that was completely unavoidable, unescapable and life-threatening. And he did this, he chose to do this every day of my entire childhood violent abuse. Three years ago, Jenny told me of the horror she experienced at the hands of her father, Richard Haynes. He is vile. To cope, she developed multiple personality disorder, also known as dissociative identity disorder. From when she was barely a toddler, her mind became a home to a battalion of more than two and a half thousand different people. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm Symphony. Hi, Symphony. Hi. They all had a job. Oh, OK. Hello. Hi, Muscles. Hi. They all had a personality. Judas, <laughs> my name, blabbing my game. <laughs> and they were all there to protect Jenny from the enemy in her own home. It is an army. It's an army. It's a very good idea, that one. Yeah, I like that. Jenny's psychiatrist, Dr George Blair West, says DID is an ingenious coping mechanism, enabling abused children to cope not only with the pain of their abuse, but the smells, tastes and sounds. But it's a condition that is often misunderstood. Jenny is not ill. There is nothing wrong with her brain at all. What we're all seeing is an incredibly sophisticated defence system to help a very young mind, which is still plastic enough to do this, to cope with the worst trauma imaginable. George came to understand Jenny's mind and her many personalities during her 23 years of treatment. You there, Symphony? Hi, George. <laughs> Hello, Symphony. Hello. And guided her through her toughest time when she decided to seek justice. But that led into During a long and confronting police investigation... This is possibly one of the most terrifying rooms in the universe. Jenny returned to the family home to relive the dreadful abuse she suffered. And this is where he made me get on the end of the bed and that I was raped by him. Finally, in 2017, Jenny's father, Richard Haynes, was extradited from the UK and charged. Then, in a landmark case, Jenny's evidence, given by a number of her personalities, was accepted by the court. After just a couple of hours into the hearing, her father pleaded guilty. I impose an aggregate sentence of imprisonment for 45 years. It was a life-changing moment. 
And when she said 45, <laughs> I did that. <laughs> The war was over. Jenny had won, and so began her new life. She moved into her own home, started painting and writing. But her army of personalities, those there to protect her, didn't leave. Why haven't they disappeared? Because we don't want their life experiences to be solely negative. Um, you want them? I want them, absolutely. I want them to have fun. I want them to enjoy life. But I want, you want them to stay? You do not want them to disappear? God, no. No, no. Um, they are me. And they've been with Jenny for as long as she can remember. Back in the 70s, she was dismissed as a little girl with a big imagination. Jenny's domineering father was the breadwinner and ruled the roost. Her mother, Pat, stayed at home and cared for the children. And that's what makes it so difficult to understand. How did Jenny's mother not see or know about the violent and incessant abuse being inflicted upon her daughter inside the family home. Where was mum? What happened? How come mum didn't see? It's very difficult to say, hey mum, where the bloody hell were you? What was going on for you that you didn't see this? I guess these were questions you knew were coming, huh? Today, 52-year-old Jenny Haynes and her mother Pat have a deep and enduring bond. But their relationship has been scarred by a very sinister force. Richard Haynes, Pat's husband and Jenny's father, who relentlessly abused her in the most unthinkable way, all within the walls of the family home. I can't imagine what that's like to find out what, that your daughter's been so violently abused, but also by her father, your husband. Can you articulate to me at all what, what goes through your mind when you learn that? Shock, I think. Shock, distress, fury that you didn't know, absolute wild anger. For years, Pat suffered depression, and later in her 70s, she was diagnosed with autism. She says she missed many potential clues and only learned the terrible truth years after she and her abusive husband parted. But Jenny still needed to confront her mother with some hard questions. Where was Mum? Why didn't she see? Why did Mum not understand? When Jenny did actually say to you, where were you? How come you didn't see this? Were they distressing conversations for you? Yes, they were puzzling. They were, they were distressing. And I started to think, where was I? And the answer was very simply, up to here with... Um, Antidepressants. But there. But there, always there, up to the neck in antidepressants. Have you felt the need to say you're sorry? Oh, yes, I say, I've said that quite definitely. Yes. I'm so sorry, Jen. I feel never so your stupid fault. and so ignorant and so silly. But it was never your fault. No, I know. It's not what you did or didn't do. How important was it for your mum to tell you she was sorry? Vital. It was... The first time she said she was sorry, it was on a par with the judge sending Dad to jail for 45 years. It's that important to me. 
There's no point being angry about what you can't fix. And no point being angry that poor mum was drugged out of her brain by her stupid husband and she couldn't read my mind and she didn't understand what I was trying to say. There's no point hating her for that, but I can love her for saying I'm sorry. Have you forgiven yourself? No, no, I'll never forgive myself. I'm sorry. I just can't, cannot forgive myself. For a mother, it is an eternal anguish what she missed and what might have made the difference. It is one of the reasons Jenny and her multiple personalities, including Symphony, have written a book along with her psychiatrist, Dr. George Blair West. It's not an easy read. Almost at the beginning, Symphony tells us to put it down. <laughs> yes, Symphony wanted to put trigger warnings on every page. It was, it was very hard. As difficult as it was to write, Symphony, who's pictured on the cover, wants readers to know this is a story with a happy ending. My will to survive is stronger than the evil that tried to destroy me over and over again. Since seeing her father jail, there have been many changes in Jenny's life. She's found a new style. To wear fabrics that make me feel pretty, make me feel sexy, is something I never envisaged I'd be doing. So you're using words that I, don't, I didn't hear when I first met you? Oh Pre gosh, no. Sexy? <laughs> no, I was as sexless as they come. <laughs> But not anymore, because Jenny has also found new love. Meeting somebody and becoming somebody's special person is earth shattering for me because it undermined everything Dad said about me. I am lovable, I am beautiful, I am strong, I am courageous, I am woman, hear me roar. Uh... Finding love is a wonderful and very private new step for Jenny. But it is also an extraordinary relationship because it's not just Jenny. I actually have to say that would be a slight challenge in the beginning to go, OK, <laughs> who else is in the room here? Oh, we've created a sacred space. And when we are involved in anything relating to our, pa our person, we go into the sacred space and we shut the door and nobody else comes in. The door is shut. It's the sacred space is in use. Um, if you want to come in, you have to knock on the door. This is a good person. Oh, definitely. A keeper. Mm -hmm. Not letting this one get away. Is being in a relationship, an intimate relationship, something that tells us Jenny is going to be OK? Absolutely. And one aspect of that which is particularly important in telling us that she's going to be okay is the sexual side of the relationship and it was just so wonderful because so many of my patients have been sexually abused it is enormously difficult for them to reach a point where a healthy sexual relationship fits into a caring loving relationship and she's managed to do that which i think is just fantastic Jenny is reclaiming her life and her liberty. The little girl who'd only ever dreamt of being a hairdresser today has done a PhD and has a master's in criminology and a degree in psychology. In May this year, she sued her father for damages and was awarded $840,000. But it's clear Jenny's biggest win is her newfound sense of freedom. 
I've got a social life. It sounds to me like you're having fun. Oh, I'm having the best time. I'm having so much fun. You know, she said to me, this is a love story. It's pretty true, isn't it? She loves herself. She loves life now. Yep. Hello. Hi. For psychiatrist Dr George Blair West, Jenny's courage has left an indelible mark, as George has on Jenny. How important was George to you in your life? I'm not sure I would still have a life if not for George. As a woman who spent so long simply trying to survive, it's heartwarming to see Jenny finally living life to the fullest, along with her many personalities. And is there any, any silver lining in all of that which you went through? Would we have been the, the same person today without it? No way. We would not have had the ability to stand up for what is right, who we are now. <laughs> You're going to say it, aren't you? You really are going to say it. <sighs> hmm. Is, to quote muscles, fucking phenomenal. There you are, you made me say it. I'll be eating carbolic for dinner. Um, who we are now is so much more than we ever thought we could be. And I'm happy. You're happy. Yeah, I'm happy. And I'm doing my best. I may not do it all right every time, but I'm doing my best. And my best is pretty damn good. <laughs> If this story has raised issues and you need to speak with someone, you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.